Welcome back to U.S. History. Uh, we are picking up with letter C, a demand for change. Uh, we've seen that the efforts of Herbert Hoover were either not enough or in the wrong direction entirely to solve the national economy. And soon enough, there was going to be a demand for change by the American people. In 1932, things had gotten worse. The gross national product had dropped from $104 billion in 1929 to $41 billion. More than 5,000 banks had failed. 86,000 businesses had closed. A quarter million families had been evicted from their homes. It was estimated that about 28% of Americans had no income whatsoever. Imagine that. One out of every four families had no income whatsoever. However, instead of turning to God for help, Americans of the 1930s will turn to the government to save them. Uh, that's probably one of the clearest examples of a shift in the American population. In the past, Americans would turn to God. A prayer would take place. A revival would take place in America. But in 1932, we see Americans having enjoyed the freedoms of the 1920s. Now, instead of turning back to God, hoping, praying that God would take care of them, instead they will turn to the government. How is that much different than today's crisis? Where have we heard anyone say, hey, we need to pray, we need to call upon God, the, the great physician, the great healer, uh, the miracle doer for all of these problems that we're facing with coronavirus and other things going on? Where has anyone publicly made that statement? Where, has pe where have people expressed that view? If people have been saying it, guess what? The media, the news, the politicians, most of them don't really care. They don't think it's good enough. The media wants you to be scared. The news wants you to be scared. The politicians, they want, well, I guess they want to see how much more they can gain from this, take advantage of this situation. Yes, they want to take care of us and help us but at what cost? Just some thoughts for us to consider as we continue learning about the Great Depression. Many of the people will turn to the government to save them. Number one, the Bonus Army. The Bonus Army, and this is what you need to know about them, consisted of unemployed World War I veterans who came to Washington, D.C., to ask for an early payment of the bonus promised them. Uh, see, the Bonus Army, they were supposed to start receiving these payments in 1945, but about 20,000 of these veterans wanted payments now. Congress refused, and Hoover rejected their pleas for help. The Bonus Army decided to encamp on the outskirts of D.C., their presence created an embarrassment and disturbance in the capital city over the course of several weeks. Hoover concluded that they had to go. So, Hoover sent in the military, uh, which used excessive force to remove the Bonus Army. While the forced move was a bit more extreme than Hoover was hoping for, he did take responsibility for the military's action. Unfortunately, it made Hoover look heartless to the rest of America. Some Americans were even looking favorably toward communism in Russia or fascism in Italy as a solution to the problems in America. So did the Bonus Army get paid? No. Number two, the election of 1932 comes around. You know how it works. Every four years, there's an election. Republicans went with Herbert Hoover. Uh, Republicans, after all, had little hope of victory, and the entire party was being blamed, and there was no likely replacement to Hoover, so he was easily renominated by the Republicans. 
but they had little hope of actually winning the general election. Democrats, however, had a rising star perfect to win in 1932. That man was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. FDR, a distant cousin of Theodore Roosevelt, had been on the rise to political stardom since Woodrow Wilson's time in office. But in 1929, sorry, 1921, it all came crashing down when he got polio, which would forever weaken his ability to walk, paralyzing from the waist down. But the crash and depression suddenly made this human politician a favorite candidate. He was relatable because of his weaknesses. He became governor of New York and in 1932 the Democratic nominee. Uh, some people don't realize this, but if you actually look at your money, uh, FDR is pictured on the dime. As a polio victim, FDR supported efforts to fund research for a cure to that disease. One fundraising program he supported was called the March of Dimes, a campaign to have Americans donate a dime apiece to help the fight against polio. After Roosevelt died, Congress voted to place his likeness on the American dime as a memorial to his efforts. The issue was continuing along the Republican traditions that seemed to be leading to failure or to trust Roosevelt's promise of new ideas and actions. Hoover himself said, My countrymen, the fundamental issue that will fix the national direction for 100 years to come is whether we shall go in fidelity to American traditions or whether we shall turn to innovations. Unfortunately for Hoover, most Americans were tired of tradition and wanted action. Roosevelt's campaign song, which sang, Happy days are here again, the skies above are clear again, let's all sing a song of cheer again, happy days are here again. The program that Roosevelt favored was called a New Deal. This was the name of Roosevelt's campaign, of course, promising to conquer the Depression. He avoided going into specifics about how he was going to save the economy, and few questioned him on it. In the election, Roosevelt will win decisively over Hoover. If you look at page 472, it shows you uh, the election of 1932 map of the U.S. And you can see that, for the most part, Roosevelt overwhelmingly defeated Hoover. Well, you know how it works. Hoover has lost the election, but he's not quite out of it yet. He is known as a lame duck president. Uh, Hoover still had a couple months left in office, and he had to sit by as a lame duck. A lame duck, by the way, and this is what you need to know about it, it means a president, he's president, but has no real power waiting to leave office. Hoover feared that Roosevelt's plans would lead the nation towards socialism. Also, any efforts Hoover made to solve the economic crisis failed because Roosevelt refused to support his plans. By refusing to lend support, Roosevelt was making a wise move politically by not being tied to Hoover's policies, but it was bad for the nation because it continued to spiral further into depression in those last few months. As a lame duck president, Hoover was unable to get anything done because, while well, Congress, recognizing Hoover was on his way out, didn't want to try anything new with this quote-unquote failed president. One more situation that took place during those last desperate hours was a banking crisis that began sweeping the country as people began making runs on the banks in order to get their money out before the bank failed. During this time, if you had money in a bank and the bank closed permanently, you lost your money. Of course, if, if you, we know from the coronavirus situation right now, if we know that something is going to run out, what do most Americans tend to do? They make a run for it. They try to get that product before it's too late. For example, toilet paper. 
Oh, we hear that people are running out of toilet paper. We need to get it quickly. And so Americans rush to the stores to buy it. And now guess what? It is all gone. Well, the bankers, the people were making runs on the bank to pull their money out. Well, the banks don't have everyone's money, and that forced them to close even faster. Roosevelt continued to refuse to help, and Hoover was helpless in dealing with the crisis. That's all the notes we're going to cover for today. For tomorrow, there is a quiz over pages 465 to 473. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.